All right, so I'm gonna be showing you how to open up and disassemble this HP Pavilion laptop model 15-CS3063CL. All right, model numbers right there. All right, so this one actually, the hinge broke and then the screen was having issues. So hopefully replacing the screen is gonna fix it. Looks like they're missing a rubber piece here. Uh, but anyways, we're gonna remove the two rubber feet back here near the hinge, okay? So just peel that up. I just used my fingernail to get in the edge and then peel it out. So you can use plastic pry tools or whatever works for you, but there we go. We're going to use a JAS1 screwdriver to remove the screws back here. All right. And you want to keep them in order because they can be different size, shape, and length. The way I do that, I put them flat side down like that on my desk in the pattern I remove them. All right. <clears throat> if this video helps you out, make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. And if it helps you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. We're going to switch to a JAS Zero screwdriver and remove the screws on the front. All right, there's three of those. So let's go ahead and remove all of those. Okay, let me spread out the screws a little bit better so that easier to keep track of. All right. <clears throat> okay. All right, and I think this bottom cover might be a little tricky to get off. We'll see. All right, make sure you put in a good amount of pressure so you don't strip the screws. If the screwdriver is skipping, then either you're using the wrong size screwdriver or um, the screw is too damaged. All right, anyways, let's go ahead and see if we can get the bottom cover off. So a lot of times I like to go from the little gap here to pull on it and then see if I can get my fingernail or a pry tool under there, but it looks like that's not gonna pop out. So, let's go ahead and try from the front. So, we're gonna carefully, slowly open up the screen. Okay, I already actually fixed the hinge. The hinge was broken and I used some JB Weld to epoxy it in place. But anyways, we're gonna go ahead and pop this out if we can. So, I'm pushing with my thumbs here and trying to pull with my fingernails, but as you can see, it's having a difficult time coming out. Let's try with a suction cup. Okay, and even this is not coming out very easily. Let's try back here. Okay, so the back here works best. So you'll start there, use a suction cup, and you can see it pops out pretty easily. <clears throat> okay, and once you get that, now that we formed a gap, I can pull up with my fingers and push down with my thumb here, and we can kind of work our way around, and hopefully we can continue popping that out. Okay, so, oh, actually it helps to just pull on this like that, okay? Let's go ahead and do this again from the other side. So pull up here, push down on the hinge, and you can see it's popping out, all right? Then what we do, um, it usually helps to pull from the middle because it pulls the clips inwards. So I'm gonna pull up from the middle here like this, and it's actually popping out. And then sometimes you might have to help it. Let's see, it's gonna be, it's being a little difficult. But pull it up and push down here, and let's see, come on. Come on, there we go. There's some middle clips in there as well that are making it difficult. But you can see most of it, oops, most of this side already came up. Let's grab here, kind of wiggle this as we pull and see if, and there we go. So I pulled that up and then I was like wiggling it like that and it popped out. So here you can see the inside, that's what it looks like. Okay, it's a bit dusty, so we are gonna wanna clean that up before we continue. I don't know if you can see all that dirt and dust there okay um, but we are going to get a thumbnail real quick so I'll put this here we'll get a thumbnail and then I'll clean it up okay give me a second I'm going to clean this dust out and I'll be back all right so I'm back clean this out you can see it's a lot less dusty there's some stuff here that didn't want to come out but it's a lot better than before all right, next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and remove the battery. Let me actually get a thumbnail here real quick. So we'll get this centered. Okay, we are gonna be using the JAS1 screwdriver to do this, okay. Uh, looks like there's four screws holding it in place. So let's go ahead and remove those four screws. The battery model number, if you're wondering, is HT03XL. Um, it's actually a very common HP laptop model number. Uh, model battery model number sorry 
All right, they also have an HP spare part number here, L11119-855. But uh, anyways, let's get these four screws out. And then I'm just going to quickly go over what's what's inside. All right, after we remove the four screws, we'll get underneath these. And then we can just pull straight up. And it comes out like that. We'll have to kind of slide it forward. There you go. Oh, there's a lot of dust underneath this battery. So we'll clean that as well a little bit. Okay. Okay. Clean that up. You can see it's a lot less dusty now. All right. So here you go. HP spare part number if you want it. <clears throat> and the battery model number. Okay. We'll set the battery aside now. Okay. The main thing we're doing here is replacing the screen. But let's go ahead and take a look at the other components. You got the SD card slot here with this connector to the motherboard. These latches can flip up. You just get underneath and flip it like that. All right. There's another one for a two and a half inch SATA hard drive, but there's nothing here. So if you get the adapter, you could likely connect a two and a half inch SATA hard drive here or a two and a half inch SATA SSD. All right. There's an M.2 PCIe NVMe SSD right here with a screw hidden underneath here. Okay. Also JS1. I don't want to mess around with stuff that I'm not repairing, so we're going to leave that be. Let me double check. And yes, it is NVMe. You got the keyboard backlight connector here, keyboard connector here, trackpad or touchpad connector here. All right. Battery connector there, obviously. We just took it out. Then you got a stick of RAM. Let's go ahead and pop the RAM out. You just pull these two tabs to the side away from it like that. Pops up and then you can pull this out. The RAM is an 8 gig PC4 2666V. You can put any PC4 2666V. So if you find two 16 gig sticks or 32 gig sticks, if that's even available, you can actually use that. Okay, get some of the dust out. And also, yeah, like I said, there's two slots here, so you can add a second one if you want. If 16 gigs is enough for you, you can add another 8 gig stick matching this. All right. Um, one thing I didn't mention, um, after removing the battery, uh, you want to open up the laptop and then press and hold the power button for at least 15 seconds to drain any residual power. This will make it a lot safer to work on, especially if you're messing with the LCD LVDS connector, all right, or the screen connector. Okay. Um, it's not hundred percent required, but I've heard a lot of people damage their computers when they don't do that. So it's a good idea to do it anyways whether it's required or not okay so there we go we'll close that up um, and here is the LCD LVDS connector again there's a flip latch there to undo it we're not going to remove this side because we're going to remove it from the other side speaker connector here with a wire that goes underneath to this speaker over here sorry if it's too far back but you can see that black wire there it goes to this speaker wireless antennas going into the uh, screen connect to the thing here whoa one of these antennas are actually ripped off. That's not good. I don't know if it can be soldered back. I don't know how it ripped off like that. I didn't really do anything with it. But, uh, yeah, that's not good. So I'm going to probably have to see if I can solder that on. Um, otherwise, they might not have some wireless connectivity. Okay. Then you have the two USB connectors here. Uh, connecting with this over here to there and then we got this cable going here for the DC jack or charge port all right so that one you grab that you can kind of wiggle it and pull it out um, if you're going to remove the charge port you do have to undo the screws here lift the hinge up and then you can pull that piece up and out um, but yeah not much else to see in here I don't know if I'm going to be able to fix this wireless antenna so the wireless antenna let me see here it's more the part on the wireless card that's broken off, but to remove the thing here, we're going to pull straight up on the tail. It pops out like that. Again, I don't know how this one broke. I didn't even do anything with it, but uh, I'm going to see if I can get it out and somehow solder that back in. Okay, it's going to be somewhat of a pain. That's not an easy thing to repair, um, but let me see if I can hold that down and pull that connector out. Huh. It just pulled out the piece there. It's not pulling out that whole connector. So I don't know if I can actually pull that out. 
I think it's... Is it broken off? I don't know. I can try and just add some solder to that there. But, uh, I don't know if it's going to stick. The problem is, there's not much room to work in here on this thing. So... Yeah, I don't know how I'm going to solder this for them. They need a new wireless card. I don't know if I can pull that out. Let me try. I think it's not pulling the connector out. It's just pulling... Is it? No. Hmm. Yeah, this piece is just broken off. They're going to need a new wireless card. This piece is just, I don't know if you can see that, just broken off. Um, can I somehow pull the piece that's stuck in there out? Is there a piece stuck in there? Yes, there is. So how am I going to get that out, though? Hmm. I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to get this out. It's like stuck in there. See that? Some of these solder jobs are so bad it just pops out like that and then we have no way to even put it back. I don't know how I'm going to get this out. I can't even grip it. So, I'm not too sure what to do there. It looks like they're going to be having only the auxiliary antenna because the main one is the one that popped out. I don't know how else to do this. Let me unroute these wires here. Take a little bit of a closer look here. a special tool that can like grip this close up. I don't think I have anything like that. You can fast forward over this part if you don't care about it uh, because this is going to be a difficult tricky thing to do. I'm going to just see what I can do. it sticks out enough for me to grab. Yeah, I don't know how you would get that thing out. Let me try with a tiny flathead screwdriver. Let's see if I can pop the bottom edge up. out. I can try and pull that metal tab now that it's sticking up a little. This sucks. I wonder if Regular tweezers will work. Let me try some tweezers. I'll be back. All right, let's try the tweezers here. I don't know if that's going to work at all. Can't even grip it hard enough. That piece just broke off. Okay, I don't know if I can really get this part in recording because I kind of need to see close up and my head's just going to be in the way. So I'm going to try and get this out and I'll be back. All right, so I couldn't get it out. I might have to end up just pulling this piece off and soldering it onto there. So at least it's usable. So let's see if we can do that. Wow, this thing's on there tight. Try 
wiggle and pull this off. Yeah, this connector's on there real good. There we go. Okay, so what we could do is we could solder this middle piece onto there, and then we can solder the outer parts um, onto the outside. Okay, so the outside is already shielded. So if we can solder this like that and that like that, it should be good. Okay, but uh, we want to avoid getting it, sorry, onto that one down there. So let me see what I can do. Maybe I can put a little kept on tape there. Um, that's the kind of like it's a high temperature like electrical tape. So let's go ahead and put a little bit there and see if that will work. Okay, this isn't part of the repair that I was hoping to have to do. I thought I was just going to end up being doing a screen repair, but I guess the machine or whatever they did to solder that did a bad job. So we're going to get this capped on tape here. Where is the opening? Here we go. Okay, and we're just going to take a small piece and cover that. Um, also, because the thing is stuck in the antenna wire or the connector we can't really do anything about it so we're just gonna do make do with the what we got okay because otherwise they'd also need a new antenna um all right so that away. grab this accidentally peeled way too much of the tape up but uh, we're just gonna cover that one little dot on this side and we can actually cover this side as well okay and we're just gonna basically cover that so it doesn't get soldered all right just like this okay next thing we're gonna do I need the soldering iron so let me go get that we're gonna add a little solder to that dot there and a little solder over there. And yeah, we'll see how it goes. I'm gonna put this, we're gonna attach this one here. I don't know why the auxiliary one is one, but there we go. We'll clip that down and then this, we're gonna have to solder on this way. Okay. We'll see if that's doable. If not, I might have to add an extra like little bit of wire here. Okay, I'll see you guys in a bit. Let me get the soldering iron. All right, I'm back. So I'm gonna use some of this liquid solder to try and just make this easier to stick the thing to. Okay, ball of solder right there. Okay, and I'm going to heat that up to try and get it to stick. Let's see if this works or not. Okay, the one on the side definitely stuck. I want that small piece of having some issues. Let me look closer. Got maybe a little bit there but nothing enough I don't think that's enough to really I don't know if it's gonna stick there this might not work mm. okay I think I got some solder to stick there let me get a closer look again okay so now I gotta add some solder to the antenna wires here. Main one is this tiny one here. And I gotta be careful because I don't want the solder to fall on anything here. Perfect, okay. So now what we're gonna do, let's actually add a little to the bottom of this as well. This is tough because there's not much room to work. I'm going to pull this antenna out. OK, 
Okay, and we're gonna undo this. And I'm gonna rotate this so I can get a better working angle here. We're gonna put some of this on the bottom here. Problem is, I don't know if this wire is gonna be able to take the heat and work okay, but let's see. Okay, it's stuck on there. All right, let's go ahead and get the wire into place and see if I can solder it. I don't know how well this will work. I've never done this before this way, but uh, we don't have the uh, proper tool to crimp a new one on or the little piece or a new wireless card. So this is going to have to do Oh, the adhesive came up. So I'm going to have to put this back on. Let's see. Let me clean off that real quick first. Sorry, this is not like a normal thing, but I figured I'd show this process as well. Why not? In case someone has some weird cases like this and they wanted to see like what they might be able to do in a pinch. Okay, we'll get this back into place. Line it up, click it down. Okay, so this one, I'm probably gonna have to stick my head over it, so I don't know how I'm gonna record it, but we'll see. Okay, and we just gotta heat that piece up to get the solder to hold it in place, and we should be good. Okay, so we'll get this antenna wire, and we're just gonna stick it on there, hopefully. Okay, I think it's staying. So you can see this wire now, it's staying in place. We're gonna have to melt the bottom part down as well. I don't know how I'll get that side down, but... I think it's good. Let's see. Yeah, okay, so as long as hopefully these two aren't like connected together, we should be good. And now let's go ahead and continue the repair. Let me clean up the solder iron real quick and I'll be back. All right, I'm back. So let's go ahead now and take a look what's going on. We're gonna have to replace the screen. Okay, so the wireless antennas are back in, so we should be good as far as that goes. Let's go ahead now and carefully lift this open. The screen is a little bit tricky to get out and put back in because they put a piece of the bezel like going at a weird angle here. But let's go ahead and open this up. Okay, so we got this. I'm going to pull at the... Let me fix this a little bit. It's a little bit crooked. All right, so I'm going to pull at the center part here. So you pull from the center and you kind of rotate it and push it in with your thumb. Okay, just like this, just like this. Um, I'm going a little bit faster than you would be able to because there's actually adhesive that holds it in. I actually already took that adhesive out, most of it. Um, so you can see it comes out a little bit easier for me. But basically you would go down like that, pulling up with my thumb and now pushing in with my fingers, rotating it. So that motion kind of unclips it. All right, and here you can see here as well, there's adhesive at the front as well. Um, if it starts lifting up here, the, what do you call, that plastic film that's attached to the screen, um, it helps to get a thin flat tool um, to help push that down. So let me, what did I do with that? Oh, okay, so while you're pulling it up, you get in there and you kind of push down that layer as you kind of pull up and move to the side okay so there we go then once you get all of that pried up you should be able to carefully wiggle it and rotate it out this way so this is the part that's angled that's weird that has to kind of tuck and rotate in that way and it makes it difficult but here you can see there's some adhesive here 
All right, and I don't remember if this model, I think this model did have the stretch release uh, tabs. So this one, we actually used some JB Weld because this hinge was broken here. Um, and I put some plastic wrap to prevent it from sticking to it, but we can take that out now. Um, now it's being held by that, okay? But here you can see we got this. Hopefully this side doesn't break. It seems like it's getting a little bit wobbly, but that just might be the backing moving. All right, anyways, if it does have the stretch release tabs, um, you'll want to check. Usually it'll be like in the little gap here, and then you can use tweezers or pliers to kind of grab that, and you want to pull that straight back, all right? I think it did have them, um, but basically you would stretch the tab straight down this way, okay? And then same thing on this side, you would grab the tab and pull it straight down this way. Um, if there is, there might also be one at the top where you can see um, if there's a piece of plastic or tape right now, there's nothing, but you would get the tweezers or pliers, grab that, and you would pull it straight like up like this. Um, if I remember correctly on this one, the tabs all just like stuck to each other, so it's not really reusable once that happens. Um, anyways, once we get all those tabs out, we can go ahead and pull the screen forward. Uh, basically, you just go in there, grab in wherever you can, and then just pull it forward. And you're going to want to go slow and careful with this because you don't want to accidentally rip the cable that's down there out. So while you're pulling this forward, you can see there's the cable here. It is held in with some adhesive back there, so you might have to pull it forward a little bit to give you some slack to work on this. Okay, Now you can kind of lean this forward here. And then there's this adhesive holding the connector there. Um, we're going to use a plastic razor blade to kind of scrape that up to peel it out. Let me actually zoom in. Okay, so we're going to go ahead now and kind of scrape this out. Again, if you're doing this with the screen uh, cables and stuff, make sure you disconnected the battery and press and held the power button for at least 15 seconds. That's very important. All right, and we're going to go ahead and peel this up. Peel this up, okay, and then it helps to kind of rotate the adhesive strip. I don't know if you can see how I'm like kind of rotating it. All right, and there we go. Okay, now that we get here, I use my fingernails at the back edge of the connector here, okay, and then I use that on the wings to pull that back just like this. And here you can see the old screen. Model number information is right there. B156HAK02.1. Okay, we're gonna now get the replacement screen out, and hopefully, sometimes they'll send like a replacement one that's not an exact match. But uh, let's go ahead and open it up and take a look. Give me a second, I'm getting some messages. Okay, give me a second. All right, I'm back. So here's the replacement screen. We're gonna have to cut it open and see what's going on here, okay? So we'll cut this open. Okay. And how does this open? Oh, it opens like this. Okay. Get some USPS packaging and stuff. Toss that aside. Oh, they wrapped it multiple times, so we'll take this one out. Oh, okay. Okay, they threw some tools in there. And here's the screen. Oh, I guess not. Alright, I'll wrap this third one. Okay, here's the screen. So, we'll compare the back of both. Okay, it looks almost exactly the same. B156HAK03 or 02.3. So this is a 02.3, so it's slightly different model number, but it should work. And here you can see B156HAK. Hopefully you can see that. 02.3. All right, anyways, so the replacement screen has this stuff on it, the protective coating. Um, we're gonna go ahead and install this screen real quick, and then we're gonna power it up and we'll see what happens. So let's go ahead and zoom in. I'll put back on the um, bezel after I confirm it's working. So we'll get this all lined up. It's a little bit tricky here because of the lack of slack. 
but uh, you might have to kind of angle the screen like diagonal, okay? Get that lined up, okay? Make sure both sides are going in. I like to use the edges and pull it with my fingernails like that to get it in. Once it's clicked all the way, you can pull this slightly and then tape that back down, okay? Then we're gonna go ahead and just flip this back upwards. Get the screen into place, make sure, oops, let me zoom out here. So make sure the edges here get up, lined up there. Perfect. Okay, then I'm gonna make sure the adhesive here sticks down. We're gonna carefully close this. I'm gonna clean this off a little bit. Make sure we don't have any gunk here. Okay. All right, let's go ahead now and put back in the battery. Now that we have the new screen in place, we just wanna make sure that it's working. So the battery, just drop it back down with these little raised mounts here. Line that up, okay. I like to pull this closer to the battery connector and then push down, all right. Just like that. Let's go ahead now and get the screws back in. There were four screws holding the battery in place. Got one here. Okay, got one over here. Sorry this video ended up being way longer than expected. I wasn't expecting to have to repair a wireless antenna. Um, technically it wasn't repaired, it was more like a workaround to get the wireless antenna um, attached. But uh, here we go, all right, get that one in. Okay, let's go ahead now, open this thing up carefully because you have less screws helping hold it in place. Oh, all this dust and junk coming out of the keyboard. Maybe I should have blown that out as well. Okay, let's go ahead and see if it powers up. The main battery, I believe, also acts as the CMOS BIOS battery. So actually right now it's not turning on. I think I need to plug it in. Yeah. Um, either that or this one doesn't have a light on the power button. Let me go and get a charger and I'll be back because I think it's not turning on. I think I need to plug it in first. I think the battery's dead. All right, I'll see you guys in a bit. Let me get a charger real quick. All right, I'm back. Got a charger. Let's plug it in. Charge light is on. It turned red. Let's go ahead and now power it up. And the power light is on. So again, because the battery acts as the CMOS BIOS battery, it's usually going to take a while for it to turn on. Um, just give it a little bit and then it will say like the BIOS was reset. If it doesn't turn itself on, then there's a good chance maybe the RAM is bad or you put the RAM back in wrong or it's, the pins are dirty. So keep that in mind and then give that a check. All right, so we're giving it a bit. And actually, if I remember correctly, the screen wasn't coming on at all with the original one. So there's a chance it might not come on. Oh, okay, so it actually is working. So I was gonna say, if the screen wasn't the issue and it was something else, then this might not have worked. But here you can see, BIOS, CMOS, whatever was reset. Press enter to continue. So we'll press enter and it should restart itself and start back up with Windows. And there you go. Primary internal battery capacity has been reduced. Oh, low ambient, ambient <laughs> operating temperatures or because the battery's Old. So it's a little bit cold in here um, and maybe also the battery was sitting at 0% when because they weren't using it so we're just going to tell it to continue startup anyways and you can see it's starting um, it's probably going to show the username so I might have to hold this out of view somewhere I don't know I'm going to block it um, anyways I don't know here here and here okay it just shows the date and time. So as you can see, it's working. Is this touch screen? No. Okay. So anyways, now what we can do, we can go ahead and peel this thing off now that we know it's working. And the customer, I think they said they, it was uh, glossy before. And then I told them that the replacement would be matte and they said they were okay with that. So we went with a matte finish, um, screen. So we're just peeling this off. I should have double checked if it's supposed to be, um, let me see if the 
I don't remember if it was supposed to be wireless or not. Okay, it's probably going to show usernames here, so give me a second. Sometimes people don't like their usernames or names being shown. So I'm going to restart the computer one time. And let me cover up the username a little bit. We'll let it restart. Okay. And now you can see it's actually working. You can see it's complaining about the battery again. Uh, let me double check if it was supposed to be touchscreen or not because it didn't seem like it's doing touchscreen. So give me a second and I'll be back. All right, I'm back. So it looks like it is supposed to be touchscreen. Um, it even said on the listing it's supposed to be touchscreen. It could be what it is that when it broke in the first place, maybe the touchscreen was going crazy, so it was disabled. I'm going to have to check with the customer, um, but let's go ahead now and put this back together. So when you got this done, you're going to get this piece in, okay? You have to go at an angle here to get that in properly. And then while it's at an angle, you can kind of go ahead and push on it. And it helps to kind of look at the back here. I don't know if I can really show this. Let me see here. So it helps to look inside this little gap here. So you can see this plastic piece. I don't know if you can see that in the camera. You can see the plastic piece is coming through there. Um, the screen, I can't have it probably close this far because it's probably not going to work, but let's try it. Um, but basically you want to get this and then make sure that this is kind of going in right you might have to i had to pull it up slightly and then push it and i don't know if you can see now but these are all clipped in the right way you can see the black plastic is all the way down there so i'm going to lift this back up and then now we can go ahead and start clipping all of this back into place so i just run my thumb pinch it like this along the outer edge going along the sides and going all the way down okay um, I'm going to rotate this so it's easier for me to work on, just like this, okay. And then we got to make sure this is all clipped in, can be a little bit tricky here. I might end up having to use adhesive again to hold that because I don't know if it's going to hold like that, but let's see. Okay. Um, yeah, I might have to put some adhesive to hold that back in, but I do want to make sure that the touch screen is working first before I do that, because otherwise if I have to peel this back up, it might be an issue. So for now, we got it like that. We're going to carefully close this up. All right, and let's go ahead now and get the bottom cover back on. But other than that, that's pretty much all there is to it. Hopefully this video helped you guys out. Again, if it did, please make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. And if it helped you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. All right. As you saw, I just put the cover back on and I'm basically pushing around the outer edge to clip it back in. Um, I think there were some middle clips. There you go. So you want to push that as well. And that looks good. So now we just got to get all the screws back in, put the rubber pieces back, and we're good to go. All right, let's get that in. And we should be good. Other than that, yeah, I'm going to have to check. I think they might have disabled the touchscreen. Um, either that. Um, one other thing, when you replace the screen, you do want to restart the computer one time. Uh, so you want to do a regular, like from the shutdown menu, instead of pushing shutdown, you actually want to click restart. Uh, sometimes that helps. I actually tried that already, but it didn't work. So hopefully it's disabled in the hardware in that setting. Otherwise I'm going to have to replace the screen a second time on this model, uh, trying to get another one with touchscreen, but let's get these screws back in and we should be good to go. Okay, last two screws. Last one. All right, and we are gonna wanna put some double stick adhesive back on the front of the frame, just because if you look at it here, 
there's this gap and we don't want junk all falling inside here so we are going to want to eventually put some double stick adhesive along the front there all right the rest of it the sides and the tops aren't too important there are clips that hold it in place um, but the main one is we want to get down there to keep stuff from going in there. All right, that's it. Let's go ahead and drop this. See you guys later. Bye.